This is an interesting article that I wanted to break down um, um, because I think uh, there's there's uh, there's a lot to unpack here, <laughs> as annoying people tend to say. I, I, I will never never use the word unpack in that way. The only time I'll ever say unpack is when I'm unpacking uh, my suitcase after a trip. But um, but there's a lot here. So the headline, this is from, from Newsweek, which is all, all online right now. And Newsweek, is, it seems, has tried to resurrect themselves in some way. Um, they, ha they have some articles that seem like they're okay. I remember a while ago, Newsweek, Newsweek published an article from someone in the medical profession saying, we totally screwed up, we totally mishandled uh, the, uh, the so-called pandemic. We were wrong about everything, um, and that was interesting. And I think I covered that. Uh, I'm pretty sure I, I recorded a video about that one, that article as well. So this this article uh, is titled Ameri "Americans Don't Want to Fight for Their Country Anymore." So let's just let's just uh, see what's what there is to say here. It reads: A majority of American adults would not be willing to serve in the military were the U.S. to enter into a major war, recent polling has found, while public confidence in the armed forces appears to be waning. Um, and all, yes, and all of this is, is relevant, of course, because there, there are wars and rumors of wars. Of course, you know, the, I, I bet World War III has... Uh, I bet if you did uh, like a, a search of... The, the amount of times that World War III has been mentioned um, over the course of the last few months, maybe the last year, I, I bet it's leaped really high. Um, uh, and uh, you know, if you if you if you, if you like drew one of those uh, graphs showing when showing uh, how much this term is being used, um, you know, uh, for a while while there it was uh, civil war. New civil war, that was the thing that, that everybody was talking, that everybody was chattering about, that we're on the brink of civil war, and now it's that we're on the brink of World War III. So, um, so of course, if, if you're, you're about to fight a war, you want to have an army, uh, you can't really fight uh, a war very uh, adeptly without an army, you know, even if war is different these days, uh, you know, even if it's... Uh, electronic and and you know, drones and and not so much uh, it's not the trench warfare, the brutal trench warfare of World War One and World War Two. Um, but anyway, you still need to have people in in the armed forces, and the 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 numbers of recruits is way down. The number of recruits is way down. I should say. The, figure, the figures come as all branches of the armed forces have in recent years struggled to meet their recruitment targets, suggesting a growing apathy toward a career of military service. Not an apathy, I would say an antipathy <laughs> towards a career of military service. In 2023, the Army and Air Force fell short of their respective goals by around 10,000 recruits, while the Navy was, was under by 6,000. Um... And since 87, the number of active duty personnel has fallen by 39%. They don't mention the Marines, which is interesting. Um, the Marines seem to be the, the by far the most, the most based, uh, the least cucked um, of all of the uh, uh, all the branches of the military. Um, even though I guess they they now. They allow women, but they, they don't have that many women recruits, and most of them are most, from what I understand, they're still pretty hardcore, unlike every other branch, which has totally gone gay uh, recently. Um, experts say that such shortfalls are worrisome, an increasingly volatile global picture with American leadership. Unsure, will next have, its, next have to bring its full military force to bear. Um, blah, blah, blah. we have strike groups, uh, 
Marine Expeditionary Unit outside Israel now. What vital interest do we have there, I wonder, in getting involved in, in not only <clears throat> sending them weapons, not only sending them money, but uh, sending actual troops to the area? We're funding two wars, but we're actually, we've actually, we're actually boots on the ground, drones above Gaza. So we're already involved in there, and we're not sure what's happening in Taiwan. Um, yep, there's all this talk about Taiwan being the, the next powder keg whenever China just decides, uh, you know, to, uh, to push that button, you know, to, to go all the way with their uh, attempt, to, with an attempted reconquest. Um... So, how much it matters depends on what kind of people you're talking about and which, which you're not getting. That's sort of an invasive, invasive answer. Uh, Tom Shugert, uh, a senior fellow at the Center for a New American Security. <laughs> that sounds a lot, that sounds like one of those ominous, uh, that sounds like the Project for a New American Century that has that same kind of ring to it. Uh, former submarine commander, blah, 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 we're making efforts to, let's, let's skip down a little, okay, um, experts say, though, that there is a complex mix of factors contributing to the military's recruitment issues, including adapting its messaging to a younger target audience more engrossed in modern technology, and stories of supposed, quote, woke marketing hurting recruitment as well as an economic outlook that is proving a challenging environment to those efforts. So they mentioned the woke thing. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, they, t they talk about stories of supposed woke marketing uh, hurting recruitment. I mean, the, re the fact is that recruitment is down, and, the, and they have run woke marketing uh, efforts. So, correlation, as I said yesterday, correlation and co doesn't mean causation, but I don't know why uh, this is why, why they would say it's calling it, saying it's stories of supposed uh, woke marketing, hurting recruitment. I don't know why, uh, why those are stories, but anyway, I guess they have to, um, they have to evince skepticism about, about the, these kinds of things, even if it's just, uh, sort of offhand skepticism. We are actively making efforts to secure the military remains a viable and productive career choice for a majority of people. God, I mean, these these, these people talk, uh, <laughs> they talk like, uh, like, um, something you'd read off, off of a, a press release. I mean, I, I don't, that, that's, that sounds like something that some, somebody typed up for him to to, uh, to read uh, word for word. It doesn't sound like something that came naturally to his mind. That's just the effect that it had on me. A poll uh, conducted between October 23rd and 26th found that 72% of those asked would not be willing to volunteer to serve in the armed forces or America to enter a major conflict compared to 21% who would. That is a significant a difference. The remainder were unsure, and this was conducted after Hamas led an unprecedented military attack on Israel on October second, seventh. Which uh, the events of October seventh are about as sus as the events of September eleventh, two thousand one, were. Um, but you see here what this means is, uh, you know, Americans don't want to die for, don't want to fight and die for Israel which I, I think that's perfectly reasonable. But uh, 72% said they wouldn't uh, were America to enter a major conflict. That's pretty extraordinary. Like, that's, that's like, uh, the situa here's the situation, guys. There's a war on. Uh, your, your country needs you. Do you volunteer? 
72%. Nope. We're good. We're good. I mean, wow. Um, because this, this isn't just saying, would you consider joining the military? Uh, I mean, uh, absent of war, right? Uh, or, or just, uh, would you, would you, are you thinking about joining the military? How, how positive would you be about the idea of, of joining the military? Uh, you know, not really knowing whether there's, there's a, going to be a war or not. But this is saying there's a, a war, the war is on, okay? And after, you know, after Pearl Harbor, after September 11th, there were a lot of young men who were like, I gotta, you know, it's, it's on, I gotta, I gotta fight for my country, we, we've been attacked. But now, today, uh, if that happened, if, if America were involved in a full-fledged war, 72% are saying they would not be willing to volunteer. Um, okay, they're trying to, trying to, um, the spokesman here is saying the, the results need, needed context. Uh, he's trying to nuance. Don't you love when they say, when they use nuance as a verb? Nuance is just my, one of my favorite words. It's a little bit, can't you be nuanced? Um, about this. He says, I'm very skeptical of being accurate, of that being accurate, because I think the why you're in a war can dramatically change the answer to that question. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, boy. That's, uh, that's beating around the bush, but it's basically saying, yeah, well, what if there's a, what if there's a major attack? You know, just like the, the project for the new American century, you know, put out their, their release, um, in the late nineties. And this was something that was signed by a lot of people, both, both Republican and Democrat. Uh, and, uh, what, what they said in that release was, uh, it's, it's going to be hard to get America involved, uh, in war unless we have a, 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 uh, a catastrophic and catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor. There's a documentary about 9-11 called a new Pearl Harbor that, that was, was up on, uh, YouTube fairly recently. I don't know if it's still up, up or not. I suspect if you type in a new Pearl Harbor, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll have to, I, I suspect it's buried, uh, like they, they like to do with scare quotes, problematic material. Um, so, uh, buried in the, in the algorithm. So, yeah, so he's saying, so Shugert, the spokesman, uh, for the military recruitment effort represented here is saying, well, he go, okay, he goes on to say, if you look at history, we need to be convinced to get into a war. Um, Oh, this is this is somebody else, David Eustace, CEO of Military Recruit Recruiting Experts. While Americans needed a reason to support the war in Vietnam, he said the war in Afghanistan was immediate and had wide support because something happened to our country. Are they are they hinting at something there? Are they is it like, oh, they may not want to fight now, but wait till they see what what we've got cook what we're going to cook up. I mean, what what might happen. Uh, you know, in the, in the, uh, in the near future. If we are convinced that we, it's something we need to do as Americans generally, Americans generally will do it. Less people joining is another matter and it's very complex. Well, no, it's not really, I don't, I mean, I don't think it's that complex. Uh, so it goes on, it goes on to say, a Gallup poll in June found confidence in the military declined for a sixth consecutive year to 60%. It's still that high? Um, <laughs> okay. And they're going to say, they're going to say, yeah, it's, it's those Gen Z types. They're just, uh, they're, they're, they're growing up in internet age, used to immediate gratification. So, they just don't have the discipline for it. Those, those ungrateful youngsters, 
uh, who don't want to be cannon fodder uh, for a war that has absolutely nothing, to, that likely has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with them. You know, it's one thing if if uh, if we get invaded, if the United States were invaded, if it were like, uh, if it were, um, there's a there was this uh, docudrama called America, spelled with a K. Um, it was a TV miniseries in the '80s. Um, and it was all about a Russian invasion, uh, like where, where the, the Russians take over. Oh, well, well, I mean, and then there's also, of course, uh, Red Dawn, you know, um, the eighties classic Red Dawn, John Milius, you know, you know, which, which had the, 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 uh, a Russian invasion. If, if we actually get invaded and there are enemy troops pushing their way through the country, shoot, you know, shooting and, and bombing uh, our uh, fellow citizens. That's, that's one thing. But if it's just some event, if it's like, oh, uh, a bomb went off in, in this heavily populated area and thousands are dead, uh, so, and we we found out that the person who did it is, uh, you know, affiliated with Russia. Uh, so, you know, so come on, everybody, get patriotic, join and join up, and uh, be willing to be cannon fodder. Uh, you know, I don't, I, I just, I, I don't think, I don't think that's going to work anymore. It's not. It's 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 the the atmosphere is so much different than it was even in uh, even in September of 2001 September of 2001 uh, you know there there was enough of a sense of unity that a catastrophic and catalyzing event like a new pearl harbor which was what uh, the 9/11 attacks were were called a new Pearl Harbor um, back then it, it had that that had the effect on many people like to, to, to think well well we're in this together we're gonna go uh, but we're gonna go uh, fight the enemy you know that's that because they attacked us today though as I've, and I've, as I've said many times before I, I I don't I think you know, the uh, it, it would take no more than a half hour uh, for for if there if there were some other kind of event, uh, it would take a very short time for people to voice their skepticism. And and of course, you know the the powers that be would try to silence all that. They would try to shame people who who uh, who said such things, just like they they try to shame. And ridicule people that they, they call quote unquote conspiracy theorists today, but but uh, that wouldn't matter uh, because today we are so their morale is so low, belief in the in, in the institutions of this country is so uh, non-existent. Um, I was, they said this, the, mil, the belief in the military has fallen to 60%. I'm surprised it's, it's that high, but that's apparently low. <clears throat> Maybe when people think of the military, they think, you know, uh, they don't think of the military brass. They don't think of the military leadership. They think of, you know, fighting men who just, you know, the grunts out there. Um, and, and they want to be supportive of uh, those, those kinds of guys. And that's that's why they they voiced their support, but I just don't think it would work. So uh, there's no solution to this this problem, and of course the way that it's phrased here, Americans don't want to fight for their country anymore. I'll fight for my country, but I'm not going to fight for the uh, the military industrial complex. I'm not going to fight for uh, corporate interests. I'm not going to fight for uh, a so-called elite who hates me um, and hates you 
and causes domestic terrorists, you know, calls uh, middle American middle Americans dangerous domestic terrorists uh, to be. If you're not a domestic terrorist yet, you're 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 just on your way to becoming to becoming one. If you're a uh, a, a straight white male, or if you're probably if you're any if you're any race, <laughs> of course, uh, you know mainly the the white white men, but but uh, but not limited to to them either. <clears throat> so so they got a real problem on their hands, and uh, this is me playing. Playing my invisible violin. I'm so sad that uh, the recruiters have this problem, and I'm so sad that there there is no solution to this problem. You know, cry more. <laughs>